in the previous lecture we introduced trusses and solve an example using the method of joints. In this lecture we continue with the method of joints and solve two more examples using this method. So, I will take a simple truss like this, each angle being 45 degrees, these are the joints. You can see there are 6 joints, so j equals 6, 2j minus 3 is 9 and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 members. I am going to name this A, B, C, D, E and F and apply a load of 5000 newtons at E. I want to calculate the force in each member of this truss. So, ideally if I start with this point, I would take point E. The force on point E is 5000 newtons and then a force due to member B E, let me call it F B E, a force due to member F E D, a force due to member F C E and a force due to member F E. Remember all the forces are acting at the same point, therefore torque equation is automatically satisfies. The only equations I have at my disposal are F x equal to 0 and summation F y equal to 0. And therefore, I have only two equations that I can apply at this point. However, the number of unknowns is 1, 2, 3 and 4 and therefore, I cannot directly apply these two equations and get the answers right away. For that, what I should go do is get to those points where there are two unknowns only and those points are A and B, A and D. So, first thing is to get the forces at A and D and then go to other joints from there onwards. So, let us do that. To get the forces at points A and D, let me make this again. A, B, C, D, E and F is a force of 5000 Newtons acting downwards. Let me take the entire truss as one unit. Let the normal reaction at D be N D, let the normal reaction at A be N A and there is this force acting downwards of 5000 Newtons. I have not been careful in uh, making this to scale, but let the length of these small straight rods be L. So, that this diagonal rods is L root 2 this length is also L root 2 and so on. So, first thing I want to do is get N A and N D. The simplest thing to do in this case would be to apply the torque equation about this point A. When I apply the torque equation about A and make it 0, I get 2 L times 5000 is equal to 3L times ND and therefore, ND comes out to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons. Once I know ND, then summation FY is equal to 0 gives me NA plus ND is equal to 5000 and this gives me NA to be 5000 minus 10000 over 3, which gives me 5000 over 3 Newtons. 
So, now if I look at this truss, try to make it to scale. Now, I know there is a force acting here 10,000 newtons over 3, there is a force acting here downwards 5,000 newtons, there is a force acting upwards here 5,000 over 3 and this is A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, at point A, there are two unknowns force due to a b member and force due to a f member and therefore, if I bring this pin in equilibrium, I have two equations summation f x equal to 0 and summation f y equal to 0, I can solve for both the forces. So, let us do that at point a. So, at point a, the pin at a is in equilibrium under a force which is 5000 over 3 newtons acting upwards. To balance this, I need a force on this F A B acting in this direction and to counter the x component of F A B, I need a force in this direction, which will be F A F. I have already anticipated the directions of these forces. Obviously, the force on member A B due to the pin therefore, would be in this direction. So, this is a compressive force and force on F A F, this is A B A F would be in this direction and this will be a tensile force. So, the member A B is under a compressive force and member A F is under a tensile force. Let us now calculate these forces. This angle is given to be 45 degrees. Summation F y is equal to 0 gives me F a b over root 2 equals 5000 over 3 or F a b equals 5000 root 2 over 3 Newtons. Similarly, summation F x equal to 0 gives me F A F to be F A B over root 2, which is equal to 5000 over 3 Newtons. So, now I have gotten forces on two members of the truss namely A B and A F. If I make it again, I know the force here is 5000 over 3, force here is 10000 over 3, force here is 5000. I know the force in this member and in this member. Now, if I go to point F, A, B, C, D, E or point B, I have two of the three forces, I have one force which is known and therefore, I can calculate the other two forces. Let us go to point B. The pin at B is under equilibrium due to a force on A B which is compressive. So, it pushes the pin in this way. There is a rod like this. and there is a force B F, let us call it F B F, 
there is a force F B E and there is a force F B C. Sorry, I said earlier that at point B I can solve, but no, I have 1 known and 3 unknowns. Equations are only 2, so for point B I cannot solve, but certainly point F I can solve because point F there is one known force F A F and F A F we had determined it to be a force which is tensile and therefore, it pulls the point F in this or the pin at F in this direction. There is a force F F E and there is a force F B F. From summation F x equal to 0, we get that F F E is equal to F A F which is equal to 5000 over 3 Newtons. Let me just check whether this force was really tensile or not. This was tensile, so it pulls the pin in. Now, summation F y is equal to 0 gives you right away that F B F is equal to 0. The moment I know F B F, I know this force and I know this force, there are only two unknowns at point B. I can solve for forces F B E as well as F B C. Let us do that. So, let us first write the forces that we have determined so far. We have determined F A B and F A B was a compressive force compressive and its magnitude was 5000 root 2 over 3 Newtons. We have determined F A F which is tensile which is equal to 5000 over 3 Newtons. We have determined F F E which is also tensile and its magnitude is 5000 over 3 Newtons. We have determined F B F to be 0. We are now ready to analyze point B. Let us see point B has a force pushing it this way because F A B is compressive it pushes the by Newton's third law the pin out. There is no force in B F direction. There is a force F B E in this direction and there is a force let us assume now to balance the forces F B C in this direction. These are at 45 degrees each. Right away you see that this is F A B that F B E must be equal to F A B. This comes from summation F y equal to 0 and therefore, F B E and the direction also comes out to be right should be equal to 5000 over 3 Newtons. The x component F B C balances the x component of F A B as well as F B E and therefore, I can write right away that F B C must be twice of the x component of F A B or F. So, this is F A B is 5000 times 2 root 2 Newtons twice the uh, twice the x components of F A B or F B E. Let us do that now. So, at point B there is a force F A B working this way. F 
B E working this way and F B C working this way. F A B is pushing the pin out, so this is compressive. It's five thousand root two over three. F B E we have just determined, but F B E pulls the pin in, and therefore by Newton's third law, pin pulls it out. This is tensile, but its magnitude is five thousand root two over three. And F B C from summation F x equal to 0 would come out to be 2 times the x component of F A B or F B E is the same thing. So, I can write this as actually F A B cosine 45 plus F B E cosine of 45 which comes out to be 2 times 5000 root 2 over 3 times 1 over root 2, which comes out to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons. And since the pin is being, being pushed out, the pin will push the rod in and therefore, on the rod the force F B C is compressive and this is of the magnitude 10,000 over 3. Newtons. So, now we have found forces. Let us make this truss again. In this member, in this member, in this member, this member, this member, in this member. Only members which are left are A, B, C, D, E, F. The members C D, C E and E D. One can keep going from B onwards to C and D and E or work from D backwards. For example, at point D, we have already calculated that there is a force of 10,000 over 3 Newtons working upwards. Due to force Due to the C D, there will be a force F C D acting this way. This would give an x component and to balance that, I should have a force F E D acting this way. So, this is point D. Summation F Y is equal to 0 gives me that F C D over root 2 should be 10,000 over root 3, uh, 10,000 10, over 3 or F C D is equal to 10,000 root 2 over 3 Newtons. And therefore, again by summation F x is equal to 0, I will get that F E D is equal to 10,000 over 3 Newtons. So, immediately we have found the force in this member as well as this member. The only member now left is F C E. Let us now calculate the force on the member that is now left that is F C E. this we have calculated, this we have calculated. The only member left is F C E. Let me write this again A B C D E F. For this, I will take point C, which is in equilibrium under the forces of F C D. We have already calculated F C D to be of compressive nature and therefore, it pushes C out. Then there is a force F B C which we have calculated earlier and let me just have a look at that. F B C was calculated to be F B C was to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons and it was compressive. 
So, F B C was compressive and therefore, it will push point C in this manner. F C E is what we want to calculate. and these are the three forces under which the system is in equilibrium. Right away, you can see that summation F y equal to 0 would give me F C e to be equal to F C d over root 2 and we have already calculated F C d to be 10,000 over 3 times root 2 Newtons and therefore, we get this to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons. At this point, we can also make a consistency check because at this point, if I have done my calculations correctly, the x component must vanish automatically. And that it does, we can see because this is F C D with a negative sign cosine of 45 degrees plus F B C, F C D was calculated to be 10,000 over 3 root 2. So, this comes out to be minus 10,000 over 3 Newtons plus F B C was calculated to be and you can see that from the previous slides, F B C was calculated to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons. So, this comes out to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons which is 0. So, we are consistent in our calculations. Let us now tabulate all the courses, all the forces that we have calculated. All the forces that we have calculated are A, B, C, D, E, F. When the stress is loaded with a 5000 Newton load at point E, our F A B which came out to be 5000 root 2 over 3 Newtons and this was compressive. Then F A F which was tensile and it came out to be 5000 over 3 Newtons. Then F B C which came out to be compressive and its value was 10,000 over 3 Newtons. Then F F E which came out to be tensile again and its value was 5000 over 3 Newtons, 1, 2, B, C, F, E are done, four, 1, 2, 3, 4 members. Then F, B, E came out to be tensile and its value was 5000 root 2 over 3 Newtons. F B F came out to be 0. So, we have done B F, we have done B E. F C D came out to be 10000 root 2 over 3 Newtons and this was compressive. F C D we have done, F C E came out to be, we just calculated this 10,000 over 3 Newtons tensile and F E D came out to be 10,000 over 3 Newtons.
strain size. You can go back and check these answers yourself. Next question is what happens if each of these members in addition to this load had weighed themselves. So, here is a load of 5000 newtons if each member let us say had a weight of 500 newtons. In that case as I remarked earlier what we would do is divide this weight equally at each point. Thus, pin A would carry the weight of member A B which is 250 and member A F which is 250 additional weight of 500 newtons the reaction would change correspondingly. Point B would carry the weight of A B, B F, B E and B C. So, it will carry an additional weight each half of each. So, 250 times 4 1000 newtons in addition to whatever else is being done. I would leave this exercise for you to complete as to how the forces in each member would now change when I put this additional load due to the weight of each member onto these pins. As a final example of the method of joints, I am going to solve a problem again based on a problem from the book of Merriam on statics. This is a truss like this, where the lower point here is fixed. these are joined like this by rods and this point is also joined by rod and this point is then fixed here at point A. So, this is a truss A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. Notice that these lines H, G, G, F and E, F are slightly slanted. D, C, and B C are vertical. This is 10 L in length. So, is E D 10 L. This is 13 L. F C is 13 L. G B is 16 L and this length is 26 L. The truss is loaded at points. See, let me make this in red at points C and at point D by 2000 Newtons each. And we want to calculate the forces on different members. Notice since both point A and H are on fixed uh, pins, this problem is statically indeterminate externally. Let us see how. So, if I take this structure, then there is a vertical force here, let us call it N A Y, and in anticipation, I am already assuming N A X is going to be to the left. Similarly, N H X is going to be to the to, to, to the left and n h y and there is this load 2000 newtons 2000 newtons then the condition summation f x equals 0 gives me n a x plus n h x equals 4000 notice that i cannot determine from this equation n a x or n h x separately. Summation f y equals 0 gives me n a y plus n h y to be equal to 0. That means, n a y and n h y are going to be opposite. 
the value of n a y or n h y can be obtained by applying the torque equation and we I am going to take the torque about point h So, if I apply torque about point h, this is 10, 10 L, L, this is also given to be 10 L. Then, by torque equation, I get 2000 times 30 L plus 2000 times 20 L should be equal to, this is N y, 26 L times N y at A. and this gives me n y a at point a equals 2000 times 50 divided by 26 that's 1013 equals 50000 over 13 newtons in the direction shown so this force up is 50000 over 13 newtons and from the y force balance equation, the force out here, vertical force is going to be in the opposite direction, 50,000 over 13 newtons. This is from the equation written on the previous page. What we are now interested in is, can we determine the forces on different members of the truss? And this is what I'm, we are going to do next. So, let us look at this truss, which is like this. sorry this is up to this point this is vertical this is again now this is a b c d e f g h apparently an indeterminate problem but let's see if we can solve for forces in different members to start with, let us look at point E and I am choosing point E because from there we can solve, start solving things in a very, very simple manner. At point E, there are only two forces, uh, this is of course loaded with 2000 Newtons each. There is a force, let us call it F E D and there is a force F E F. Right away, if I do summation F y equals 0, this gives me that F E F sine of whatever that angle is should be 0 and therefore, F E F is 0. If F E F is 0, then summation F x equals 0 again implies that F E D is 0. So, starting from point A, I get two answers right away that the forces in the members F E F and F E D are 0. This force is 0, this force is 0. Now, if I go to point D here, there are only two unknown forces here F D C and F F D and therefore, I can determine both from the two force balance equations. Let us do that. So, if I go to point D, let me again make this structure. Point D A B C D E F G H at point D F E D is 0 and there is only one load 2000 Newtons. There would be a force F D F and a vertical force and again in anticipation I am making it like this F D C. 
there are two unknowns and bo both of these I can determine. Let this angle be theta and that will be the same angle as this. This is 10 L, this is 13 L. Let me in fact call it theta 1 because I am going to require other angles later. By summation f x equals 0, I get f d f cosine of theta 1 minus 2000 equals 0 and that gives me f d f equals 2000 over cosine of theta 1. Notice that cosine of theta 1 from here is going to be 13 over square root of 269 and sin of theta 1 is going to be 10 over square root of 269. Once I get f d f, I can also calculate f d c from the condition that summation f y is equal to 0 and that gives me f d c minus f d f sin theta 1 equals 0 or f d c equals f d f sin theta 1 which is 2000 tangent of theta 1. Let us calculate these numbers. So, the numbers that we get are let me make the picture again. Two thousand, two thousand, zero, zero, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So, what we have obtained is that F E D equals F E F equals zero. We obtained F F D. I think I called it f f t or d f, I call it f d f. So, f d f equals 2000 over cosine of theta 1. Let me remind you this is theta 1, this is 10 L, this is 13 L. So, which is equal to 2000 over 13 square root of 269 and f d c d c comes out to be 2000 tangent of theta 1 which is 2000 times 10 over 13 which comes out to be 15 38 newtons. Similarly, the f d f comes out to be 25 23 newtons. So, we have found the four, four forces F, let me box them F E D, F E F, F D F, F D C. We found this, we found this, we have found this, we have found this. Now, we can move on to point F because on point F, now I know two, for, uh, two forces F F D and F E F and two unknown forces are going to be f f c and f f g. So, with two equations I can find these forces also. Let us do that next. So, to calculate the forces on f, let us balance the forces on f. Let me make the truss again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I have already shown you how these are the other lines. This is angle theta 1. If I look at point F, 
it has a force E f which is 0, it has force do I call it F D or D F? Let me see. I call it D F. F D F acting at an angle theta 1. Then this has a force and in anticipation I am going to make the direction down F F G and let us call this angle at which it is acting theta 2 and therefore, that angle is going to be this angle theta 2 and we will calculate its sin and cosine soon. Then in anticipation again, let me just anticipate that the force F C F is going to be towards the left. So, this point F is in equilibrium under these three forces F T F, F C F and F F G. To calculate sin and cosine of theta 2, let me just drop a perpendicular from here. Recall that this is 10 L, this line is 13 L, this is 16 L. So, therefore, this portion is going to be 3 L and this length F C is going to be 109 L and therefore, I can write sin of theta 2 is going to be 10 over the square root of 109 cosine of theta 2 is going to be 3 over square root of 109 and we have already seen that sin of theta 1 is 10 over square root of 160 oh sorry 269 and cosine of theta 2 is equal to 13 over square root of 269. Now, summation f x at f equal to 0 gives me f d f cosine of theta 1 minus f c f minus f f g cosine of theta 2 equals 0. Similarly, summation f y equals 0 gives me f d f sin of theta 1 minus f f g sin of theta 2 equals 0. From the second equation, I can find f f g right away. Recall that f d f was 2000 over cosine of theta 1 and therefore, f d f sin theta 1 is 2000 tangent of theta 1 and f f g is going to be f d f sin theta 1 over sin theta 2 that we saw from this balance equation which is going to be 2000 times 10 over 13 times the square root of 109 divided by 10 and that comes out to be 1606 newtons. So, we have found F F G also. Having found F F G, we can now calculate F C F also, because F C F then is going to be F C F from the previous equation. If you look at this equation is f d f cosine theta 1 with a minus sign plus f f g cosine of theta 2. You plug in the numbers f d f cosine theta 1 we already know is 2000. So, this is Oh, did we get the numbers right, uh, sign right? Let us check that. Uh, we have plus and minus. So, this is plus and this one is minus. So, that the direction that we have anticipated is already correct. If you plug in the numbers, this comes out to be 2000 two minus F F G 1606 times cosine of theta 2, which is 3 
over root 109 and if you calculate this it comes out to be 15 38 newtons. So, let us see what all forces have we found in the truss. This is the truss. We found this force to be 0, this force to be 0. We found this force, let me put it in red. We found this force, let me just write this first A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So, we found this force F, F D to be 25, 23 newtons. This is of course, loaded with 2000 newtons this way and 2000 newtons this way and this force is compressed uh, tensile because it pulls D n. Similarly, now we have found F D C this force which is 15 38 newtons. We have found F C F which is also 15 38 newtons and we have found F F G which is 1606 newtons this force. Similarly, now I can go on. Now, you see if I look at point C, the, the two forces 1538 and 1538 newtons are known here and therefore, I can calculate F C G and F C B by balancing forces on point C. So, let us balance the forces on point C. On point C, there is a load of 2000 newtons acting this way. F F C is a compressive force because it was pushing point F outwards. So, here also it pushes point C this way 15 38 newtons. Similarly, F C D which is a force which was pushing point D up is going to push this point C down with 15 38 newtons. Then in anticipation, we are going to have F C G acting in this way and F B C acting up. The two unknown forces here are of course, F B C and F C G. Let us look at these lines. This length is 10 L, this is 16 L. So, if I look at this angle and let me call it theta 3, I am going to have F C Z, C G acting at an angle theta 3 with sin of theta 3 equals 10 over square root of 356 and cosine of theta 3 equals 16 over the square root of 356. Now, we are ready to calculate F B C and F G C. So, let us do summation F x equals 0 which gives me F C G cosine theta 3 equals 3538 newtons and therefore, F C G is equal to 3538 newtons divided by cosine of theta 3. I can plug in the numbers and get my answer. Once I have known that, I can also calculate F B C by saying that summation F Y equals 0 and that in this case gives me F B C equals 15 38 plus F C G sin theta 3, which is 15 38 plus 35 38 tangent of theta 3, which is nothing but 15 38 plus 35 
38 times 10 over 16 Newtons, which is approximately 1538 plus 5, which is 3743 Newtons and is pushing point B up and therefore, this is compressive. So, we have calculated forces up to G C and B C. If I know other angles, I can go further and calculate all the forces in all the members. Having done method of joints, now we go to other method called method of sections, where if the number of joints becomes too large, that method comes out to be handy. Imagine a huge, a big truss, where you have to keep going from one point to the other, the method may become a, a very, very time consuming method. In that case, the method that is used is known as the method of sections. In which case, we cut a section through the truss, so that a maximum of 3 members are cut and then I have 3 equations to solve, namely summation f x equal to 0, summation f y equal to 0 and summation tau about some point equal to 0 that give me those 3 forces. Let me illustrate this method again by the same truss that we have solved so far. A, B, C, D, E and F and here is a load of 5000 Newtons. Suppose I want to now get the forces in members B C, B E and F E. What one would do in that case is make a cut through these members and look at this section of the truss and see how this is in equilibrium. In particular, if I make this section A, B, I made a cut here, I made a cut here and I made a cut here. A, B, F. This member would be pulled this way by a force F B C. It does not matter what direction you take. If the direction is opposite, you will get a negative sign. Already we have seen that at A, there is a force of 5000 over 3 Newtons. this may be pulled this way by F B E and this way by F F E. So, now this section of the truss is in equilibrium under the forces F B C, F B E and F F E and the force 5000 over 3 Newtons, which is known already. I have 3 unknowns and 3 equations namely summation F x equals 0, summation F y equal to 0 and summation tau is 0. So, I can solve for 3 these unknowns. Let us do that. So, what I have is this section of the truss. this is being pulled this way by force F B C, this is being pulled this way by force F B E and this is being pulled this way by force F F E and there is a net force here which has already been solved for 5000 over 3 Newtons. Right away summation F Y equal to 0 gives me that F B E over root 2 is equal to 5000 over 3 or F B E equals 5000 root 2 over 3 Newtons. And you can see that this is actually pulling 
the 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 rod and therefore this is going to be a tensile force let us compare this what we had gotten earlier we had obtained f b e to be tensile of 5000 root 2 over 3 newtons now summation f x is equal to 0 gives me that f b c plus f b e over root 2 plus f f e is equal to 0. Only f b e is known and therefore, f b c I get a relationship between f b c and f f e. From this equation I cannot get it. So, what I will do is instead of go to torque equation about this point. If I calculate the torques about point A, there are two torques F B C and due to F B C and F B E acting on the truss and these torques must add up to 0 and that is what will give me F B C in terms of F B E. Let us do that next. So, these are the forces which are acting F F E f b e f b c 5000 over 3 newtons either i can take torque about this point and calculate b c f b c in terms of b e easier would be to take torque about point b and balance the torques due to f f e and 5000 over 3 newtons and that gives me 5000 over 3 times l one way is equal to f f e and the direction is also correct times l l cancels and f f e comes out to be 5000 over 3 newtons this is also pulling the rod and therefore f f e is tensile and you can compare with the earlier answer where we had calculated f f e to be tensile of 5000 over 3 newtons now, using the equation summation f x equal to 0, I can also calculate f b c and let us do that. We had summation f x equal to 0, which gave me f b c plus f f e plus f b e over root 2 is equal to 0. We have already calculated f f e and f b e f b e is equal to 5000 root 2 over 3 and that gives me f b c is equal to minus 10000 over 3 newtons and this is coming with a minus sign therefore f b c is in the opposite direction and it is compressing the rod. So, f b c is 10000 over 3 compressive force which we had of course obtained earlier as you can see f b c was compressive 10000 over 3 newtons so we have learned two methods of analyzing forces in a truss one is method of joints where we take each pin joint and make and apply equilibrium conditions there there's no torque involved there because for each pin joint the torque due to forces passing through that, that joint are 0 and therefore, the only conditions we have are summation f x equal to 0, summation f y equal to 0. The other method that we have seen is method of sections which can be applied to selectively calculate forces and different members of a truss. What is done in this is a section is made where maximum of 3 forces are passing through because the equations that we apply are three numbers, three number f y equal to 0 and summation torque equal to 0. So, in any calculation maximum forces I can calculate are 3. So, section is made so that there are maximum three force forces through that section and then we apply the equilibrium conditions to, to get these forces. This is a simple plane analysis of trusses to summarize 
what we have done is analyzed plane trusses and gotten forces in them. In an advanced course, what you will be learning is how to analyze three dimensional trusses and also how to take deformities into account.